Well, hello, hello. So, Summer Game Fest. Jeff Keeley. So, Summer Game Fest. Jeff Keeley. Ten seconds. What do I have to say? Um, okay. So, they're going to announce Kingdom Hearts 4, uh, Dark Cloud 3, Beyond Good and Evil uh, 4, uh, to, to, uh, the following con programming contain content that some viewers might find offensive and may contain flashing lights. Okay, okay. Th th thank you for the warning, Jeff. Please welcome to the stage the creator of the Game Awards, Jeff Keighley. The Dorito Man himself, Mr. Jeff Key. Oh, these these closed captions. Okay, never. All right, I gotta really pay attention and listen in. All right, thank you guys for the summer game fest. Please do not come on stage. Hello, Don't do that. To summer game fest 2024. You ready to see some video games? We are so thrilled. Are you ready to, to see the prices the for these video games? games? Live from the YouTube theater here in LA. Now, if you're watching this show, <laughs> all that stuff well, about like the advertising the for it. I'm not shocked, but it's just funny moment. being like 250,000 for like a minute. You deeply care about this art form and the health of this industry. The good news is that we have a lot of amazing games to show you from creators. D Damn, Jeff, you really could have gone in. You know, we're we're a healthy industry. You know how many layoffs happened in the time since. But the Game Awards? It, this has been a tumultuous Wait. and difficult year with company layoffs and studio closures, which have disappointed all of us. Good. Bring it up. Else happening. Our industry is evolving and changing. And thanks to digital distribution, smaller teams and new creators... Okay, he put in one line. Incredible success. You know, he, if, he, if he really had some things, he should have been like, here are the so studios... That have been affected. Don't just put the studio name. Put the people in the studio. Put faces to the names and people who got laid off. teams or solo developers. Really go in. It's pretty cool, right? And I get inspired that new ideas, new teams, and smaller creators can and will break through. It's smaller creators. Dragon's Dogma 2. <laughs> Capcom. Today. There are many paths to sustainability and success, and that's what makes this industry so, so great. And you'll see that reflected in the show today, because over the next two hours, we'll have big C franchises kind of some like weird like Star Wars, uh, this band, guy is so Potter, <laughs> but also smaller titles, including a few games made by single individuals and first-time creators that we invited to be part of this show because we think this platform is important as a way to show you new things that you might not even know about. So when you see a game that piques your interest, please wish list it, or even better, send it to a friend and get them excited. That's how we together can grow the gaming community. And we are going to do that today over the but next But even then, it doesn't hours, matter. A lot of games to show Shit, Hi-Fi Rush Plus did pretty good. After, the game got great. Titles. Critical acclaim. Studio still gone. It <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm going to stop getting into that. I'm not trying to bring this thing down, but I, I can't get past it. World premiere. Next. Uh, hey, look, this is a hot dog guy auditioning for the, um, ooh, the lead in unannounced action game. Wow. We see you as more of a sidekick. Oh, sure. I get that a lot, but uh, check out my range. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Rage. Empathy. Oh, hilarity. <laughs> this guy. Strength. <laughs> What game is this anyway? Horizon Lego? <laughs> what? Hey, neat costume. I gotta get me one of those. Ooh, sandwich. <laughs> Sorry, gotta go. <laughs> Who is that? That hot dog guy is Aloy. An amazing they really made <laughs> Lego Horizon. A lonely hero, hunting machine, but all by herself. I, I, I don't outright hate it though. 
hunting with her pals. Like, it's like, it, it's goofy, Exploring. but I, I, I kind of like it. <laughs> it's like, John, you're losing your cred. <laughs> It's like, it, it, it looked pretty clear. Also, damn, this is a PlayStation game. This wasn't at the state of play. <laughs> They're just holding on to games being like, yeah, we ain't gonna talk about this. I was just thinking about that like, as this is going. It's like, this, why wasn't this at the state of play? This would have been something to premiere, but I guess Jeff had had the money to be like, now nah, hold, hold back some of your announcements. Horizon. Mm, damn, it's on. Okay, that, I did not expect a Nintendo Switch. That I did not expect. I thought it was a PS5 exclusive. And why was that trailer kind of crusty? I don't. I don't know. Something about. Is it the stream? Is this something I did? It, that trailer looked crusty. That is while it's on Switch. PlayStation character on Switch. When we're we gonna get uh, Joel and Ellie on Switch too? I want to see Last of Us. To the next game from Torn Banner Studios, the developers behind Chivalry 2. For their next project, I remember that game. To announce No More Room in Hell 2, the sequel to the 2011 award-winning Source mod. Eight players start separate in the dark, and it's up to you to find your friends and survive with permadeath. Here is the first look. What if I don't want to find them, Jeff? I'm just trying to leave them be. Yeah, what? Hold on. You're, you're gonna. I'm sorry, I'm gonna break the illusion. You're gonna see a YouTube screen in a sec. Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm gonna turn this down to 1440. Maybe it'll be a little cleaner. That might have fixed it. It might have auto set to 4K, and it's like. It, it was looking weird on this monitor. It was like over overtly sharp. Little zombie survival game. Okay. Got a little left, left for dead, going on. Perma death. A player co-op. Okay. Is this gonna be a uh, PC or is this gonna be on consoles too? So depending on the specs, I could probably play it on this PC. Okay. Uh, oh. Okay. Okay. Epic. Okay. It's and on Steam too. I thought I just saw Epic Game Store only. I was about to be like, oh no. <laughs> but then I saw the Steam logo. Huge fan of some of our reveals like Street Fighter Six a few years ago, and of course Final Fantasy VII Rebirth last year. When she was sitting in the audience. Well, this year she's joining us on stage. We're thrilled to have her with us. Please welcome Curious Joy. Thank you, Jeff. Hi, everyone. I am so excited to be here at Summer Game Fest. I'm here with you today to share some even more super fun trailers. So let's get straight to another world premiere. This is a highly anticipated game from a beloved franchise. Let's take a look. As young witches and wizards, this is that like Hello Neighbor, that weird ass ha heroes. Oh no, it's Harry Potter. <laughs> I thought it was Hello Neighbor in the we back. Wondered, Do I have what it takes to be the next a beloved franchise that people do not think is beloved <laughs> these days. <laughs> Now, so we already had this Quidditch game back in the PS2. It's pretty decent from what I remember. Although, it, it, it looks too much like a Fortnite mod. I wouldn't be shocked if I see Jonesy come up <laughs> in this. 
Victor Krum. Quidditch champions. Everything. Day one with PlayStation Plus. Oh, okay. Potter, Quidditch champions launching worldwide on September 3rd for consoles and PC. Now we move from the Potterverse to a brand new world. It hails from a single developer, Gavin Eisenbeis, up in Seattle, who has been making games all by himself for a decade. His last title, Choo Choo Charles, was a fan favorite, and he showed me this next game a few months ago, and I Choo really Choo wanted Charles. to do it here. Get ready to backstab, race, or cooperate with up to 20 of your friends. In Jeff, you really, uh, you know, I only got like eight, eight friends. <laughs> what? Drop the soap simulator? You know, this is like that meme that people always talk about with Jeff Keighley, where they're like, he'll set up an announcement like, you won't believe this announcement. It made me tear up. I was salivating out of every end. And it'll be like something like this. <laughs> Not to discredit this game. And also, I, I did see that. The the feed, the date on that, 420, 69. I, I see you. <laughs> Cut, cuddly prison escapes. <laughs> like the, got the bear shank redemption just going on in this. Although I don't, I, I didn't like the the visual of them walking to that toilet and he was holding a spoon. <laughs> That's never a visual you ever want to see, in any capacity. Is someone walking to a bathroom and they have a spoon in their hand? Or walking through the sewers with a spoon. <laughs> Whoa, they got high. Man, they're just putting anything in games now. Cuff bust. Okay. That's a fun one, right? I remember that's all made by one person. Congratulations, Gavin. So glad to have that on stage. All right. If all I can right. get Next, two people to play with me, then I'll get it. Star Wars Outlaws coming out on August 30th from Ubisoft. I'll drop pretty soon. Film games, the first open world Star Wars game where you live the life of a scoundrel. On Monday at 12 p.m. Pacific, you'll get to see a full gameplay showcase during Ubisoft's Forward event, streaming as part of the continuing Summer Game Fest events. But right now, we've got an exclusive new glimpse at the game, just a small taste of what's to come. Work in progress does not represent final quality game capture and cinematics. It's like at least another single player Star Wars game is coming out. It feels like they never make it. It's like put my boy Babu Frick in one of these games. I want to see him in a video game. This game looks cool. Like nothing's really coming in August. Maybe I can pick it up then. I think I spotted Lando there. So great. And by the way, I'm just noticing everything we're showing you so far, I think is going to be, you know, coming out, uh, you know, this year, Cuff Bust, I'm not quite sure, but it's like, it's so cool that there's stuff that we're going to get to play in the next few months here. All right. Well, moving back to smaller teams, a few weeks ago, I had a chance to play through this next game. And I have to say, it is really spectacular. Neva comes from Nomada Studio, the creators of the game award winning game Grease. It chronicles the story mm. of Alba, a woman bound to a curious wolf cub. Here's your first ever look at the gameplay. All right, gameplay, that's what I like to hear. You know, so far, everything here I'll say, it's been gameplay. 
It's like, that's what I want to see. Oh, yeah, I think I remember seeing. Like, I, I want to see gameplay. I, like, cinematic's cool, but there's only so much I can see of those. And already I need to write this game down. <laughs> I, lo I love the visual style of what I'm seeing so far. Let me get my notes. Yeah, this looks great. People are like, what's the gameplay? You're just walking around like... If this is all the game, I'm still cool with it. Like, the environments and just everything I'm seeing is so cool that even if it's just that, I'd be cool. Look, there's combat, there's other stuff. I can already tell this game is is going to wreck me at some point emotionally. I, I, I can already tell. Like, I can just feel it. Yeah, this 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 looks great. It, yeah, this is this sick. <laughs> Never. Twenty. Well, everything too. Trust All right. Me, is such a true work of art, especially when you get into some of the combat. It is tons of fun to play. And there's much more coming later today in the Devolver Direct, which will air directly after Day of the Devs on this. Oh, Devolver's doing their thing too. Oh boy. Right, I forgot. For our next game announcement. What's kind of sassy they're doing? Okay, what is this? Study the past if you would define the future. All are architects of fate. Working in these walls of time. Let us all for death prepare. Or on the last great journey fare. Let me not then die ingloriously and without a struggle. But let me first do some great thing that shall be told among men hereafter. Each of us shall endure this world's life until the end. Oh, boy. Okay, so cinematic is pretty all right. Just it's probably like a sim kind of game. So it shall be Civilization Seven. Something like that. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. All right. That's crazy. I was on, on point. We are thrilled to finally announce. You know, that, that's cool. Civilization 7 is coming day and date to PC. Listen, Civ 4 was, was a classic, classic game. I haven't played Civ in a long time. But we also have to thank you. Our incredible fans around the world for your overwhelming support of this franchise for over 30 years. They're like, we don't need to show gameplay. You know what you're getting into. And we hope you'll join us later this summer for the full reveal of Civilization 7. In the meantime, I'm curious if it's going to be still like with the, the more like modernized system or more with uh, the older style. Damn, I called that one. <laughs> that was funny. Is that, is this, uh, it's not long stuff. It, I think this is that game. They're showing it off at a few different events here and there. Yeah, Black Myth Wukong. Listen, that's a day one. That's a day one purchase. That that gameplay looked nasty when they were showing it. Deluxe. Eh, I'm cool with the standard. Oh, 
damn, oh, damn that, that, that statue's kind of hard. Eh, standard edition for me. Meta quest? What's, what's this? No one knows why, like, only for three. It's like, oh, this is only... This, this is only for Oculus Quest 3. This is not for the second one. I had to catch myself. I unfortunately said Meta Quest. I don't I don't like to call it that. I still am like, yeah, I got the Oculus Quest 2. Like I'll still say Quest 2 and I'll just say Quest 3. I ain't calling this thing the Meta Quest. It just Perhaps it's so goofy. Fated to build the monoliths, reaching heaven and returning with a gift. Do you want a Quest 3 though, I'll say. She honestly, I'm still waiting for whenever they announce that GTA San Andreas port that was supposed to drop. That's it's been like three years. Like, where is that? Like, I'd buy a, I'd buy a uh, Oculus Quest three right now if they announced that. Once human. Once we were human, then we were too human. Remember that game, Too Human? Not just me. Yeah. <laughs> Play like never before. Now a game, especially now that they announced Call, Call of Duty Black Ops is going to be on there day one. It's like. Oof. Samsung Gaming. See, I have a Samsung TV, but. I feel like my connection is going to be so booty that it's not even going to be worth getting it. Have any of you faced Tyranids before? Only these past two days. Then there is much to learn. Unleash the fury of a space marine. I feel like they were talking about that game a while ago. Fuck, was it like the last game right, awards? Welcome back to I can't tell. Some of these games, game, like, yeah, they've been in development so long, I forget when they drop. The show, and I'm very excited to introduce our first guests. They are legendary creators who are working on a brand new fantasy RPG metaphor slated to launch this October. Please welcome the director and art designer of Persona 3, 4, and 5, Katsura Hashino mm -hmm. and Shikanori Shojima. Mm -hmm. Now, this game I do want to get, but I got to get through all my other, like, 100-hour RPGs before this drops. <laughs> it's like, do I want to replay Shin Megami uh, 5, the new version? I got beat. Reload. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. It is a pleasure to be here. My name is Hashino, and I am the director of Metaphor. It is a pleasure to be here with Mr. Soejima. あの、このゲームはね、あの、アーキタイプという他のゲームで言うところのジョブですね。その姿に主人公たちが変身して明日の未来のために戦うということで、This game is an RPG in which the party members transform into their jobs, which we call archetypes. These archetypes allow you to fight against your enemies. アーキタイプは they're like, listen, you know, Persona, we've done everything. We're going to bring the job system to the series. Even though technically Shin Kamigami kind of has like a form of that, and Persona has a persona that with the Personas, but nah, job system. Archetypes are the embodiment of power born from the will to face your fears and anxieties. We gave it our all to instill each and every archetype with a feeling of strength and uniqueness in each of their designs. All right, got the in dragon total, there will be, in the be more party. than 40 types of archetypes available in the game. These archetypes can gain experience and even evolve. Some of them can evolve into stronger versions. あの、Black Knight, Dragoon, going to be over. 
あの今日はあのこのアーキタイプをテーマにした最新のトレーラーをお持ちしましたぜひご覧になってくださいありがとうございました So we are pouring all of our acquired expertise into this game to make it as exciting as possible In fact, we've even brought our latest trailer today, which is centered around the topic of these archetypes. Thank you very much, and we hope you enjoy it. All right, I'm ready to see this. I want to reveal that the, the Xbox show. I was like, all right, I'm, I'm there. The reality is we oppress, we fight. It's like they were flaunting that UI. If you, I was seeing like some footage. That UI was looking clean. A great evil flows through this land. You have found a way to wield true magic. Many more protectors and followers will gather to your side. Remind people. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> that menu is clean. Oh God! You must acquire more archetypes and bring them together. How's this? Gower. No holding back. It isn't even a thought. This is a day one buy. Acquired a most interesting power, an archetype whose existence was only theoretical. I just hope nothing else drops in September or whenever, whenever this game does drop, because, oh, at least hopefully not another RPG. I can only do like one at a time. Like if I was if I was playing this and some other big one. Okay, a few days uh, after my birthday. All right, sweet. I have a timeline to beat all my RPGs now. Such an honor to have Hashino and Shojima with us uh, on stage. Thank you guys, and for that deep look at the archetype, such stunning visual designs. Now we're going to jump into the Arkhamverse. Batman Arkham Shadow is a MetaQuest 3 exclusive VR game coming out. Y'all motherfuckers year. leaked As this. Batman, I'm so mad. I, this would have been a surprise. <laughs> Here's your first look. Yeah, this thing did leak a few days ago. <laughs> it was like some Arkham listing page. Shadow. It was like Arkham Shadows. I know Jeff was mad. <laughs> He probably threw a turkey sandwich at the wall, There's being like, darkness. my world premiere is ruined. Driving the city mad. The only light left. They got the gray ghost poster in the back. It's from the fire in the streets. Casting shadows of rats on everything that was once good. That was a vampire. Here is their weapon. But they're not the only ones who can use it. Fight on my rage, I am still just a rat in a bat in a cage. <laughs> nothing to destroy my city. How far will I go? Tell me that doesn't sound like that. <laughs> Despite all my rage, he's still just a bat in a cage. <laughs> only on MetaQuest 3. And it could be cool, but. Like I said, I'm, I'm waiting for when that San Andreas ver that port's gonna drop. Probably got canceled years ago, but I'm still holding out hope. I am looking forward to heading back to the Arkhamverse. Now, it is time to update fans on a legendary fighting game franchise. And that includes me. Because I have been a fan of this series ever since one of its first iteration and have been playing each one ever since. So, Which one? let's check it out. There's a lot of legendary fighting games. This could be, this could be anything. Oh, okay. It's Mortal Kombat. Are they making a Street Fighter 6 anime? Wait. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait. 
Wait one. Oh. Okay, so that's that's the new DLC. No. <laughs> no. Oh my god. I can't even get into Oh, I'm never going to hear the end of it now. I was like, they ain't bringing Bison back. This dude is dead. Oh my god. <laughs> Why am I not shocked? <laughs> Does look pretty cool though. All right, that's a that's a pretty clean roster for that. That that's a clean like DLC year two. But damn that! <laughs> I'm excited for that Bison one, but at the same time, like, man, a friend has been ribbing me about Bison and Street Fighter Six, being like, oh yeah, uh, Zombie Bison's gonna be in the game. I was like, now nah, this dude's dead. He's staying dead for once. Nope, he's back. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> now I'm scared. Like, shoot, Akuma was nasty in six. Like, what are they gonna even do with Bison now? Like, oh. They're gonna make him just d disgustingly crazy. <laughs> he's gonna have so many options. This is pretty cool. See, for a moment, I was like, are we legit going to get Capcom versus SNK? Well, I was just like, okay, now we're just getting like the crossover for Street Fighter Six for DLC. I was holding this like, off. Oh. And that would have been wild. Like, fuck, that's a game that needs a collection. Put all those games on a collection and put the Marvel games on a collection. <clears throat> Oh, also another one of my, my most anticipated games this year. I I can't wait for Sparking Zero. Th th this game this game's gonna rock. Like I've been I've been itching for one of these like Tenkaichi games for a minute. And this it just looks great. The second I heard there's gonna be like 30 Goku, I'm like, all right, they got it right. Like at a minimum, they gotta have at least. 20 at a minimum yeah, it looks it looks great too like it's funny like even back then when i played budokai one i was like this looks like the show in every generation i'm like man it looks like the show and now i'm like it looks more like the show like how how much further are we gonna get <laughs> This this gonna be it, this gonna be crazy, especially that apparently they did uh, at least on the PlayStation Store it does show that it's gonna have offline multiplayer. Oh my, yo! It drops the same day as the Atlas game. All right, I know what I'm getting for myself. There I'm gonna get go, me, me both those games. Zero, October 11. Now we step into the world of Delta Force Hawk Ops, a free-to-play tactical shooter available to play on all platforms. Here's a look at their multiplayer FPS extraction mode. Multiplayer Rally tactical shooter. All right, I sleep. Nah, I've seen too many of these kind of games. Collect and decode the mandible brick located at the tourist center at the southeast. Like, you really gotta do something like different to, to get me, like, hooked in. Execute swiftly Unless the gameplay is just, like, so position. clean and good, where I'm like, all right, I'll give it up. Give it a try. But it says free to play. It's just like, you know, I, I can at least give it a try. I'll, I'll at least give something a try before I start, uh, doo dooing on it. But this definitely seems like a game where it's like you have to play with the people you know. Kind of like a Rainbow Six Siege where 
you play that game solo, you're, you're, you're just asking to never win a match because <laughs> ain't nobody got your back. Shoot, honestly, if I play this game with my friends, people I know, they still might not have my back, to be real. Just knowing them. Delta Farce. But that is not all. The game's premium. <laughs> Why do you say it like that? Black Hawk but Daddy that is, is not all. The original game <laughs> that is also fully licensed to recreate moments from the award winning Ridley Scott movie. Here is your world premiere first look at But that, that is not all here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> ladies and germs. <laughs> Black Hawk. Oh, okay. Why are they burning tires? RPG! Hold on! All units prepared for landing. Two teams, one foot. Clear. Secure and capture an eight in your cabinet. Over. Get down! Get down! Capture on PC development build graphics gameplay features. Like I saw, saw it kind of like uh, frame rate hitching a bit. Global tests. I, I couldn't see it was going too fast. And now I have an update for you on Fatal Fury: City of the Wolves. <laughs> oh, here we go. For real this time. It was also, wasn't it just like the logo. They're like, here we go, logo. It must still be early in development. I feel like they didn't show early 2025. Home. Oh, they must be waiting a while. Then. Okay. Dolby Vision Atmos. Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos. You will feel like you are the chief. Okay. So I was using like, man, these would be pretty good. But then I look at the price and it's like, oh, that's three grand. I'm good. <laughs> I definitely want to get like a way better monitor, at least something with just some higher refresh rate and at least 4K. But anything that fits that uh, variables is so expensive.
it was pretty much that fall guys uh final mission where it's like the platforms drop steam mobile switch okay all right Bring me some more mecha games. Like an armor core drop room was like, oh wait, actually these games are sick. It's like, nah, they've always been sick. They've, they've always been cool. Especially the arcade ones. I for, I'm still forgetting the name of that arcade mecha game I used to play back in the day. That game was, was nasty. I always remember the name and I'll forget it. it. It'll probably come to me in like a month from now. I'll be like, oh yeah, it was that game. Summer closed beta test coming in August 2024. Mecha break. We're back here at Summer Game Fest, and that was a look at Mecha Break with its immersive aerial and ground combat with lightning fast maneuvers. Next, Jason Blum and his Blumhouse banner have become synonymous with incredible horror films over the years, like Get Out, Megan, and last year's Five Nights at Freddy's. Well, now Blumhouse is entering the video game world in a big way. Tom Hanks big, the horror game. <laughs> Honestly, you should have just started with Black Phone. <laughs> From the studio that brought you Five Nights at Freddy. Dark times await us. Vengeance will take shape. It's like Bioshock. Again. Grave Seasons. Okay. I cannot sleep. I cannot sleep. Dude, that one look a little different. I must not sleep. Sleep awake from I eyes out. I to sleep. And I am scared to death to stay awake. Don't worry, Viv. If any ghosts actually show up, I'll protect you. Oh, so one of those uh, like PS1 styled. No matter what. I, I, I like that this, uh, this like style is kind of coming back into it. Police department asked me to help with a case. Why would they need a game designer? Oh, what was that? This <laughs> is some, some developer mode. All right, that that one, that's the one right there. That that last one was the game. <laughs> that that one looked cool. Yeah, like the uh, the sprite one and the PS one styled one and, and like that game developer one. Th those were the three that stood out where I was like, okay, like th those seem pretty cool. That stupid X trying to fit in. Stop, go back to Twitter. <laughs> Please welcome Jason Blum, CEO and founder of Blumhouse and Luis Blaine, creative lead at Blumhouse Games. Hey guys, so we got ourselves a full slate there. That's incredible. So, so Jason, tell us a bit about uh, why did you want to get into games like this? What are we doing? Well, we've been uh, very, very busy. Damn, they kind of um, almost sound the same. I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Thank you guys all. Great to hear uh, the fans out there. Uh, you'll, you'll they're like clones. They're like brothers almost. We're working Jason and Jeff. <laughs> Oh, I Jason and Jeff always getting into trouble. Those two knuckleheads. Don't worry. Anyway, horror is, uh, to my great relief, getting more and more popular. Our movies are working. It's working on streaming. It's working in live events. And we wanted to try and take our approach to movies and apply it to games. And that's what you see here. We're going to do independent games. We're going to look for creators and give them a platform and, and encourage these creators to be weird and subversive and find the most effed up, scariest things they can and put them into really cool <laughs> games. 
Well, they, they look they look great. It's a really diverse, cool slate. Uh, Luis, tell us a bit about, we saw a bunch of games there. What can you tell us about kind of the overall lineup of games? Well, as you just saw from our slate, our horror games are a lot like Blumhouse movies. They come in many different flavors of fear, which means there's a horror game for everyone. So maybe you're a fan of nostalgic 90s experiences with a bit of a twist, intense first-person shooters, or maybe, Jeff, you just want some bonus murder in your otherwise very cozy farming sim. <laughs> I think, you know, we as horror fans, we know that there are so many different subgenres to explore. And our independent development They're going to make Terrifier the, the video game. It's going to be banned in every country in the world. We have supernatural scares. We have cosmic horror. And our team has worked it's really hard. It's going to make Manhunt 2 blush. Global, like, wow, <laughs> you're going too far. Partners. And that means for us that we really want to, as we're working in indie projects, yeah. which means that we can take and I risks. respect this. You know, like no, no speech, none really can. the limits of what's possible Just in scary storytelling. And going and I so respect excited. that. Yeah, no, I've been asked looks, position there, being like, awesome, oh, I don't know what to say. You have there, and I know, you know, we'll get into when games are coming out, but some of these are coming soon, Jason. Right? We got a good slate. Well, yeah, we're on, uh, we're on PC and console, and um, and uh, yeah, we wanted to start with uh, with not just one, but we wanted to start with a few games. So, uh, so you want to you want to tell us about those? Yeah. So, Fear the Spotlight is our first release coming yeah. later this year, and it really hits our mission statement. It's an amazing '90s horror experience. It's got great characters, a compelling narrative, but it's also super creepy. And I think people will be big fans of it, even if you're not normally into horror. And quickly, actually, Fear the Spotlight is getting its first trailer as part of the yeah. Day of the Dev Showcase. So, stay tuned after the show. Directly after. Awesome. Well, I know this is just the start, so we'll probably be seeing you in future years with more from uh, Blumhouse Games. But guys, what do you think of the slate? Pretty amazing, right? What these guys are pulling off. Jason, Luis, thanks so much for being here on Summer Games. Thank you, guys. All right. And now, here's the world premiere of a brand new Power Rangers game with a retro Oh! Fail. Power Rangers. Okay. Digital Eclipse. All right. I like them a lot. Action game. Oh! <laughs> All right. Day one buy. <laughs> Day zero purchase. Th yeah. Th I'm a sucker for beat em ups. <laughs> Especially if it's a digital clips release. Yeah. Oh. I. I don't, I don't need to see any more. I'm buying this. This, this isn't even a, a question. Yeah, this shit looks nasty. <laughs> this looks good. Damn. They got, they got all... Yeah, they're, they're putting some love into that one. Wishlist now. I'm there. Shoot, so far this summer game fest is is really good. Like everything I've seen for the most part, like, I, I've been I've been digging. Like there's been some stuff where it's like, okay, we've known about that game. We're seeing some gameplay. It's like it looks nice, but so far it's pretty pretty good show. It's flowing pretty good. Like time is actually going kind of fast which is pretty rare for these events usually i'm like like damn how much much more time we got so i'll say right now like pro props to the show because so far it's it's going through pretty clean there's another one of these games where it's like that looks cool but i feel like it's gonna get sad at some point I don't know if I'm trying to go through that. That's look cool though. 
Deer and Boy. All right. What a beautiful game, Deer and Boy, which comes from first-time developer Jason Houdet in Paris, who started that project alone in 2020 during the pandemic and now has a team of eight helping him realize his vision with financial aid from the French government and games like that are why we do this show, giving first-time developers a chance to show you what they're working on. All right, next, after a long wait, Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 is oh. arriving later this year. <laughs> Jeff, this <is> he <laughs> got to really be careful with those words you say. Here, you can't be saying after long day and then say Kingdom, because my heart rate spiked to like 200 for a second and <laughs> down. <laughs> After long anticipation, Kingdom Calm Deliverance. But <laughs> God disposes. You almost said almost. He should have been like, "Hey, here's the next game. Here's the trailer." <laughs> you did me dirty. One's a smart-ass Smith, and the other's a blue-blooded fledgling. You behave like a spoiled brat. How dare you speak? Gentlemen, praise be to our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Father, there are many sinners in this world. But in the end, we all face your judgment for what we should have done, but lacked the courage to do. The last time I ran away, I lost everything. I'm never going to run from that fucker again. Kiss! Kiss my ass. Okay. Never, never got around to playing that, that first game, but that, that looks that looks alright. Next, we step into the dark mind of Silent Hill creator Keuchiro Toyama-san. Oh, yeah, uh, Slitherhead. In 2021, we announced his new game, Slitherhead, at the Game Awards, and now we're giving you a look at the gameplay from his independent... Well, that's kind of, I was going to admit, because like a few days ago, Jeff was like, yeah, you know, uh, lower your expectations. There's not going to be anything too good here at the show. And he was like, Slitherhead. It's like, you mean a game I'm actually really looking forward to? Why are you doing them dirty like that? Like, put put respect on Slitterhead. It's beyond two souls, but good. I figure out, like, I'm seeing these little like line things pop up in certain of like the combat. I'm trying to see like to figure out what it is. Like that right there was like little blue lines. Like, are you using like the right stick or something to control that? Is it, concept's cool for this. I'm liking it. And you and you can play as a do the dog gonna throw down too. Oh, I gotta get away for the full game to see it.
Well, okay, we got we, we got some time. Oh, uh, oh my! They, they really made a game out of. <sighs> now, now after seeing how much money, uh, getting a game into the show costs, now this is just extra funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I call a dramatic entrance. There's a reason why I'm called Killer Bean. It's because I'm good at what I do. Wow. Oh my god, <laughs> this is so dumb. Really? They, they better show a little dance in this. <laughs> I better see that dumb dance. I used to be an assassin for the Shadow Agency. An international organization powerful enough to shape the world. Until they lied to me and tried to kill me. It's like you now, want Max Payne. I'm gonna destroy Here you go. <laughs> You're the guy starring idiot who wants to take down the Shadow Agency. <laughs> well, it is sure nice to meet you before you die. That dude was Naruto running. Did, did I just see? I'm not even going. Oh my, <laughs> this is, this is, I, I don't know how to react to this. <laughs> this, is e this is either really great or extremely dumb. <laughs> you know, it's both. <laughs> they made me who I, I, I kind of like this. <laughs> this stupid killer bean game. How'd this get in here? <laughs> Glad you like that one. That was Killer Bean. How you go from Slitterhead to Killer Bean? Made by another single developer, believe it or not, right here in Los Angeles. Uh, I'm not Lewis, shocked, Jeff. Work as an animator on movies like The Matrix Reloaded. Um, so fun. It's amazing what can happen in this industry. All right, to introduce their brand new game, please welcome from the Game Bakers, a small independent studio uh -oh. in Montpellier, France, Audrey Le Prince and Emmerich Toa. I, I know Game Bakers. Hello, Jeff, everyone. I'm very happy to be here. When we created our studio, Emmerich and I, we promised each other to always uh, come up with something new. So after Fury and Haven, we're here to introduce our new game, Cairn, a survival climber. When I was a teenager, was Fury, uh, Fury is like a 10 out of 10 game. But half of his team so come back. Um, and I've I'm ready. And I've always wondered why do alpinists risk their lives in such extreme conditions. This is something we wanted to explore uh, in Cairn. Uh, Cairn is a game about what it takes to go beyond your limits. You climb a mountain to reach a summit really never reached Karen. before. And the climbing gameplay is a challenge. It's very intense and realistic. It's a face-off between you and the mountain. And what you're going to see in the trailer is not from cutscenes. It's the actual climbing gameplay. <laughs> you can see more later today during Day of the Devs, but now let's have a look. All right. Named funny, but l listen, game game big. They they got they got a cooking on the gameplay front. It's probably gonna be like co-op, just like super hard. You gotta like watch all the movements and. Or it's gonna be like getting over it. It's okay, you're only 20% up the mountain. Then you fight the bosses when you get to the top of the mountain. Then just become fury too. It's probably gonna be something where it's like, as you do like the climb, your stamina just depletes over time and you gotta like, rest. 
Oh, okay. It's spelled like that. Okay. Karen. Okay. I thought, see, in my head, I was like, K-A-R-E-N. I was like, they really called this game Karen? <laughs> I'm not meant to be here. Okay, Greater Stanley Parable. I'm a fighter. I'm meant to be in the arena. In combat. But instead, I'm out here in the middle of the woods. Running a tea shop. So, what does running a tea shop involve? Well, there's a lot of gardening. And I've had to get used to the pretty unique tea machine they've got here. None of these tasks are all that hard. They just take patience. And I'm not really the patient type. It's like some I'm Legend of Zelda music. Of course, I have to actually serve the tea to our customers. And once that's done, I'll usually check in with Boro, the guy who owns the shop, to see if my help is needed anywhere. And when all the chores are done, sometimes I'll just sit on a bench and do absolutely nothing. It's not fighting, but it's peaceful. And what's weird is that I actually feel good. I'm happy. I can stop running now. I can stop. I can stop. I can stop running. This is good for me. I need to enjoy this. I feel good. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. Wonder stuff. Okay. PS5 Steam. That was Wonder Stop, the announcement of the next game from Davy Redden, the creator of the Stanley Parable. I sense there's a twist coming, as you would expect from him and Ivy Road. Cannot wait to play that. All right, now here's a look at the story trailer for Unknown Nine Awakening, a narrative action adventure game that tells the story of Haruna, a young woman born with the ability to venture into the fold, a dimension that overlaps. All right. The fold. Turn your thoughts inward and focus on your shade. Do you feel it? I do. Your progress is impressive lately, Aruna. These are incredible. They called themselves the Sahin. Nine among them were chosen and shielded from death. The Unknown Nine. Does this have anything to do with why Vincent is here? Humanity has lived for eons at the mercy of the Nine. It's time we took control of our own destiny. Why are you so interested in Vincent, anyhow? He killed someone I loved. Asterion? Remember stepping. Find your target and bridge the gap. You don't belong here. You're wrong. And they should have put the trailer for Slitherhead and this like side by side. You're you're wanna swap with somebody and kick ass, here you go. Unknown Nine Awakening. The fold is a strange place. Vincent found something down there. Session. Fall 2024. Oh, still on PS4. How about we see the world together? I finally have something. Something that I want to protect. I don't know if be able to, like a mobile version for the game. Oh no, it's, it's on Switch and PS4. Oops. We I I just saw this sale. I just got an email about it. And, and they're playing that clean Tree Fighter 6 uh arcade credit same. Feel honored to fight and 
Watching this be like a Dark Souls, like Souls-like soul -like game. <laughs> Alright, this is kind of long. In the Tria, the last song. Demo available. Okay, demo available now. Alright, we're back here live for more Summer Game Fest. The first Descendant, powered by Unreal Engine 5, is a next-gen looter shooter with dynamic cooperative gameplay, including a grappling hook mechanic. It is finally set for release and we're very happy here to debut the new trailer and the reveal finally set for release the when release. are they when are they showing it off I feel like i've forgotten this i think i've been so detached from like looter shooter stuff Game finally releasing. Let's do a cinematic, do some gameplay. So it's giving me like two, like so many like Overwatch vibes, and just like some of the characters I'm saying, and probably how they play in the game. Ascendant. Oh, that's super soon. That looks awesome. The first Ascendant will be available across PlayStation, Xbox, and Steam. Wishlist it now and prepare for the release on July 2nd. And now, please welcome two developers whose hit indie game, Among Us, took the world by storm and a couple of game awards. Uh -oh. <laughs> From Inner Sloth, here are Victoria Tran and Forrest Willard. We made so much money from What's up, Among gamers? Us. Can you, can you believe they just let us be on this stage? Like, no chaperones, like. I know, can we announce something totally fake? Oh, do you, do like you think they'll let us do that? Among Us 2, Among Us 3, 4? Oh, all right, well, turns out we actually have something very real we wanted to present to you all today. Among Us the uh, movie. <laughs> there's been so many great indie games in recent years, but it's also been a sec no secret that it's kind of a rough time in the industry. Some devs don't really get the chance they deserve, so we thought we could help out a little bit. That's why we're excited to announce our side project, Outer Sloth, an indie game fund we made that 
offers the kind of deals we would have wanted back in our less popular Among Me days. This is our way of saying thank you to our crewmates, players, peers, by helping some games and devs have the funding and freedom needed to ship their games. And then we all get to play them, which was the real plan. I, I really want games. <laughs> Outer Sloth is our passion project and dream for a better, more sustainable industry. We are really excited and incredibly, incredibly nervous <laughs> to reveal it here and show you the current lineup of games we've managed to fund because of you. And don't worry, Jeff, it has your favorite, a ton of world premieres. Enjoy! <laughs> yeah, I like, I like, I like that. From Shapeshot. And you oh yeah, this game. Our first game. Mars first yeah, the game looked pretty pretty cool when they showed it off a while ago. We are Trinket Studios, creators of Battle Chef Brigade, and this is oh, yeah, our that game. RPG, Battle Suit Aces. We are Studio Any Percent, and we are making the Marsfield Archives, a game about building and exploring connections. Hi, we're Midnight Munches. We just released a demo for One Button Bosses, our boss rush game with a single button to press and a ton of bosses to beat. Hey, I'm Husband, game director at Huscrofts, and this is Rogue Eclipse, our epic spaceflight action roguelike, where you'll have to customize and master your starfighter, take on merciless armadas, and vanquish a fleet of colossal super destroyers. And we do have one more game that's very early in development. Hi, I'm Eka, creative director of Outer Loop Games, makers of Thirsty Suitors and Falcon Age. In our new game, explore the world in an upgradable mech and cook up tasty dishes for local communities. Fight off corpos, discover new dosa recipes, and reunite with your strange loved ones for one last meal. Project Dosa is a game about life, death, love, and food for the soul. Okay, that's nice. Thanks, Victoria and Forrest. Those all look fantastic, and I cannot wait to play them. But all of those amazing indie games aren't the only thing coming out of Inner Sloth. Did you know that there's going to be an Among Us TV show? What? <laughs> Sounds like you did. Yes. I forgot going about to be that. An Among Us TV show. Check out. I feel like this they revealed. Piece. I forgot. I think they revealed that a while ago. I, I like blanked it out. <laughs> Michael Sarah is the red Among Us guy. Seth Rogen is the green one. What if that voice cast is like out there for this offer? Are there voices? Okay, I see Elijah Wood. I see Phil Lamar. Okay, we didn't get the horror star. I was expecting to see like. <laughs> Up next, we have Sonic X. Chris Shadow Pratt Generation. is the purple. <laughs> A definitive greatest hit collection of 3D and 2D levels from Sonic and Shadow's history. Now it's time for a glimpse of Shadow's brand new powers and gameplay from a standalone campaign, as well as the official release date announcement. Oh, I can't wait for this. That seems like I played Shadow the Hedgehog. Wait. Especially since I played Shadow the Hedgehog recently, it's like, now I want to play that episode Shadow they got on this. Three hedgehogs. Still looks great. 
I haven't played Generations in, in so long, so it's like, you know, I'm excited to get back into this. They did the Frontiers. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm down to play some more Sonic stuff. I'll overcome every obstacle with this power. 25th. I like, I like that Legacy skin. The year of shadow, right? A movie coming in December too. Exciting stuff. All right. In the upcoming online survival game, Dune Awakening from Funcom, there is one small decision that unleashed a chain of events which set the stage for the story the player will experience. Let's find out for the first time what that is. Mm. The only peace I find is a future that never happened. One where I, Paul Atreides, <laughs> was never. Are they had money? They were able to get uh, Timothy Chalamet's uh, likeness I for this. The future, until it created me. But I see a narrow way, a path that might have been. What if my mother had obeyed her orders and given birth to a girl? Everything would change. Dr. Yue exposed before his betrayal. A world where my father lives. House Atreides surviving the Battle of Arakeen. Sardaukar deployed to protect the Spice Melange. A war of assassins spreading across the planet. Fremen. Terminated. Oh no. No, Muadib. No, Lizan Al Gaib. He's on that guy. No, Kwisatz Haderach. Man, D D D D Dune Part Two was so good. That was, that was a great movie. Except this, for this one. Go, go watch it. I, I don't know why I'm advertising a movie now in this, but to you. go watch it. It's great. Dune Awakening. Open world survival MMO. More Dune Awakening coming at Gamescom ONL in August. Now it is time to see the announcement of another new game from a brand new development studio. Come on, come on. Animations, pretty nice with this. Curious what kind of game it's gonna be on, on the gameplay side. Battle Aces. To tell us more about Battle Aces and show you the gameplay, here's David Kim from. Okay, Games. gameplay. Hey, now you got me. So Battle Aces is the RTS game for everyone. It's for players. That now you lost me. <laughs> no. RTS veterans. Uh, R RTS games are cool. Fun of RTS to everybody, kind of like how games such as World of Warcraft did for MMOs or Hearthstone did for card games. So Battle Aces is an action-packed army versus army game that has a high emphasis on the strategy. We want to bring this type of very specific RTS fun to players in two major ways. First, we want to amplify both the in and out of game strategizing through unit decks. And what makes unit decks very cool is not only will players be able to define the exact way that they wish to play, but also players will be able to experience an endless Get that uh, Starcraft 2 of stuff strategies. going on. Second, we want to eliminate the tedious clicks required to play an RTS as much as possible so that players playing this game are experiencing only the fun parts of playing an RTS game. 
What? So, if you want to learn more about Battle Aces, or if you want to sign See, up for the test that's coming up you know, very soon, the, the multi clicks uh, takes the fun sure out. It's like, no, 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 there's strategy in that in itself. Thank you. In that now for accessibility reasons. Oh, yeah, that, that's good. Being able to like, play it where it's like, you know, requires less clicks and opens it up. Like, that's great. What do they mean? That Shadow Video. dropped at the Game Awards last year. All right, the anyway. Finals, with its unparalleled destruction wrapped in the world's most deadly game show. Now, after dozens of updates in two seasons, we're unveiling where contestants will be going in the all-new season starting next week. Did the finals Jupiter. drop? <laughs> Sharpen your katanas and welcome to season three of the finals. I guess so. We're on season three. I didn't even know season one started. <laughs> My favorite thing in, in uh, first person games were like uh, someone's walking and they got a fist up for no reason, and, like right in front of their face. It's like, yeah, you know, do it right now. Put ball up a fist right in your face. It, that's what they are doing in like those games. And it's like, why are they walking like that? <laughs> Can you reach the finals? Yep, I didn't it. Free to play. Wow, free to play. I didn't even know it was out. <laughs> oh, no. All right. What did that say about me? Multiple Game Awards winner and a dazzling Game Awards performer, if I do say so myself. Sam Lake from Remedy. Hey. Max Payne. He st oh, he still got that. He still remember that move from the Game Awards. I think that's enough. Thank you. That we have finally decided to do a physical so, release for Alan Wake 2. This is now the only way they let me come on stage to tell you something exciting. News about Alan Wake 2. Many of you have been posting your Remedy Game collection pictures on your shelves. I know it. With Alan Wake 2 so far, digital only, sadly missing. Well, we are excited to announce physical deluxe edition hey. and physical collector's edition oh. for Alan Wake 2 coming this fall. You can lock in your copy starting tomorrow. Next. All right, sick. You I was scared. I was going to hear limited run game. I was about Alan to <laughs> be flatlined. I'm thrilled to introduce you all to Night Springs. All right, I'm happy. It contains three <laughs> episodes with three familiar fan favorite playable characters in mysterious, terrifying, and quirky what if scenarios. It was a chance for us to really go out there as if we already didn't. <laughs> Night Springs will be playable in less than 24 hours. Oh, sick. Tomorrow. Thank you. Now, with this world premiere, I invite you to step into Night Springs. Nice. All right, I, I'm, I'm pretty stoked that uh, we got physical finally. Space, existing in a countless number of parallel realities, different every time we set upon the road that leads us there, and yet always familiar to us in Night Springs. I'm in danger. Please, my number one fan. You're the only one who can save me. And I will come back for you, my love. And cut. Sean, I'm really happy. This is going to get strange. Oh. I was the only one who could save
Keep the writer and the very soul of literature. Something was different. So I, I just love the way that they they they, they combine everything with their 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 games. Like I remember when when that control DLC dropped and it was like, oh yeah, it's tied to Alan Wake. I was like, what? <laughs> Say that again. The fact is like that the the game they made for X the X Xbox exclusive game. Oh yeah, that's tied in too. Just like I love that studio. <laughs> That's right, New World New World Eternum will launch on PS5, Xbox Series X and S and PC on October 15th, and now you can play the game start to finish as a solo player or play co-op and use crossplay as well. If you're watching SGF on TikTok Live right now, you can comment HSR in the chat to claim a special in-game bundle for Honkai Star Rail of Stellar Jade from TikTok Game Rewards. Oh, well, boy, Star howdy. Rail, why am I Mario missing out on that? latest space fantasy RPG just concluded. It's version 2.3 I need to get on the TikTok Live. I'm, I'm making a mistake watching cool. it on here. A sneak peek at the upcoming ex expedition featuring a beloved character who is clearly ready for the forthcoming journey with her brand new look. I could be watching this in vertical mode, the way it was meant to be seen. Why do people choose to sleep? It's because they're afraid to wake up from the dream. You see, everything is possible in this land of dreams. The nightmarish past will disperse and fade away like bubbles in water and the future that you don't want to face will never come i was trying to actually uh try out honkai star uh st star what Ho honkai i'll try i'll try to play that <coughs> <coughs> excuse me I was trying to play this, and like my console was like, "Hey, now nah, you can't play it." It's like I have enough space. Yeah, you don't. And I never got around to re-downloading it. Okay, Honkai Star Rail. I don't, know. I don't know what I was trying to say. Wait, did that, did that skeleton just bleed? Did, did I just see a skeleton? draw blood how to do that where'd that blood come from uh, I, i'm kind of confused how is a skeleton bleeding like wh where is it hiding the blood there it goes again What's up with this game and bleeding skeletons? I 
I don't know why that's bothering me, but it, it is. It's just weird. <laughs> Play it for free. Go beat up those skeletons on me. <laughs> there you have it, the unforgiving fantasy FPS dungeon PvPVE adventure, Dark and Darker, is now live on both Steam and Epic Game Store today. So play it this weekend. All right. Lots of fans are joining us here in person at the YouTube Theater, and we thank you for that. And ahead of the show, four lucky fans were upgraded to our VIP section thanks to the Discover Orange Ticket upgrade. With Discover, you don't have to be a VIP to be treated like one. All right, now here's the announcement of the release date for Capcom's upcoming Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess. Oh, yeah, this game. It's like Capcom, stay busy. Damn, that's next time. Everything's dropping real soon. Okay. Enter the overgrown. Full campaign co-op. Go, go play with your home. Hyper Light Breaker, huh? Oh, okay. Wanna beat your friend? Oh, yeah, this game, like Animal Friends one. I remember that this game. It's probably like Game Awards or something. people here at M Corp. So we wanted to take this time to dispel any of these completely unfounded rumors and allegations and reassure you that things here at M Corp and the city of San Vansterdam have never been better. Things are going great here. We have absolutely nothing to hide from the citizens. Everybody here at M Corp loves this town. We think this town rules. Why would we hear a town that rules? I can't stop thinking about how you're saying we're selling the city for scraps. That makes me sick. That makes my whole family sick to their stomachs. My wife hasn't been on the toilet for weeks because of what you're saying about what M Corp's doing to this town, all those lies. Mm. Everyone in M Corp is really good. 
Stop crying. Right? Damn it. All right, I'm back. I think I missed it. You should have known that when you were hired on, okay? Jack, tissues, come on. Can't wait, I missed the skit with him. That's I missed the Tim this. Robinson a, skit. I'm mad. Father and son. That's actually Dude, you're so good. <laughs> this is probably we funny too. Love it here at MCOR. And we are not going anywhere. We'll be here a long time. Nobody cares. We we gotta find the guy who did this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, welcome back to Summer Game Fest, and now let's head to Sam Vansterdam for a new look at Skate from EA. Oh, okay, finally. He's been... Hey, Jeff. I oh. <laughs> oh, crap. Some really bad stuff's happening out there. They're going to need a lot of help cleaning that up. That's bad. Pre, pre. It's still in pre, pre, alpha. Damn, they announced this game three or four years ago. I know there was that, there was that like test last year. I couldn't get in. At this point, it's just like, shoot, just kind of release it in an early access state then like fix it up as it like is there. Console play testing coming this fall. Sign up. Okay, I'm gonna sign up. Maybe I'll get in this time. Maybe. It's very exciting that people will finally be able to play skate on console in the near future. And the fact it says damn. Our next world premiere pre -pre is a sensation from Japan that is adorable, deadly, and has over 25 million players worldwide. That game will fully drop in like 2027. That's right. I'm talking about Pal World. Oh yeah, this game. I mean, just look at the giant depresso. Cheer up, buddy. It's Summer Game Fest. Now, here is the first major update announcement. A whole new island is coming. All right, so this is my this will be my first time seeing some full full on gameplay of this. I, when all the Power World stuff was dropping, I kind of didn't really check in on it. I I still haven't really seen like much much of the gameplay. All I remember hearing was that it was like, like a Pokemon kind of styled game when they were using guns. That's about it. New pals, new friends, dedicated servers, servers, servers. New buildings and level cap. That was high on the Steam charts. Uh, congrats to uh, Pal World on the new update. Next up, we've got a big announcement from Valorant. Here's Andy Ho and Anar Gilfeson from the Valorant dev team. Guys. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Hey, everyone. Since 2020, we have been fortunate to serve players in their pursuit of what we call the Valorant moment. The big plays and clutches you make while all eyes are on you. Millions of players oh, Valorant. all over the world oh, yeah, I'm back. have earned their own Valorant moments on PC. And today, the stage is set to welcome a whole new group of players. Let's take a look. The stage is set in the battlefield we call life. Oh, Rank Games does Valorant. I forget.
Yeah, I was never like I was never too big on Valorant personally. I'm like, eh, it's okay. I'm just like, eh, these kind of shooters, I'm like, eh, I'm okay on. That was Valorant's core tactical gameplay. Everything you just saw was captured on console and with a controller. Valorant is coming to PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S this year. Our limited beta starts June 14th, and you can sign up right now at beta.playvalorant.com. We are so excited for your input to make sure that Valorant plays great on console. And we hope to see you soon in the limited beta. But before we go, here's the head of Valorant Studio, Anna Donlin. Thanks, guys. Hey, everyone. One of my favorite things about Valorant has been seeing the community build the game and the sport right along with us. For the last four years, we have been on the most amazing journey, bringing Valorant to players all around the world. Most Tamarin recently, has been China, out that, currently a Valorant that long. Masters, one of our largest global tournaments and community celebrations. Seeing the community evolve as new players bring their passion and expression to Valorant has been the biggest joy of the ride so far. And now we are ready and so, so excited to welcome a whole new group of players onto new platforms. We hope you'll join us and we can't wait to see where you take us next. Yeah, they're going in on the Valorant for this section. It's like, I, I have nothing really much to say on it. I'm kind of just, just chilling, just like, mm, okay. It's like, first half of the show was flowing really clean. It's like the middle of this show kind of slowed down a bit. Like right now, it's, it's, a, it's a little slow. But and we still got about uh, 17 minutes left of it. So there, there's, still, there's still a lot of other things they can they can show off. So we'll, we'll see what the rest got going on. What, what, what they got cooking in the back burner. Valorant. Exciting to have Riot on console with Valorant. Thanks for the team at thanks to the team at Riot for sharing that with us here at SGF. Our next announcement is a big deal from our friends at DoorDash. Five weeks of deals with Summer of Dash Pass. Sign up for Dash Pass now. Girl. Delivery fees and get fifty percent off your next DoorDash order. Now, here in the audience, we've got a guy who is normally co-streaming our shows, Yong Ya, who is also an amazing voice actor. Hey, it's that guy. He's countless games such as uh, Like a Dragon and God of War Ragnarok. Well, next week, Yong is going to be voicing a character in a movie, Inside Out 2, where he plays a fictional video game character, Lance Slashblade. And we've well, got all these uh, people who star on YouTube now are getting big out. roles. So Yong Ya was the Metal Gear well, guy for like, years. Now he's in a he's Disney a movie. Character. Why is he here? Yeah, I always thought Riley had a secret crush on him. I never saw the appeal. I long to be a hero, but darkness haunts my past. Oh, I'm in a hundred percent. We were all banished here, deemed unfit, worthless. Oh, don't you dare say that! You do not deserve to be thrown away. Uh, one second, Lance. Don't you remember his power move? I'm covered by your eyes. Oh yeah. 
No one is totally worthless. But I am a warrior cursed with a feeble attack. It's like, why, why they got him on low resolution mode? Put some anti-aliasing on this guy. I shall set you all free! <coughs> the number one gaming monitor brand in the U.S., Samsung, just released new 2024 monitors for gaming, work, and entertainment. Okay. Scan the QR code now to get up to $300 Samsung. Oh, that was a clip in a movie. June 17th, plus a chance to win I don't know why I said that, because it's, it's, it's just a clip in a movie. Summer Game Fest 2024! Ken Jong, what are you doing? Video game announcements. And yes, Chicken does look a lot like Ken Jong. And today, Chicken is excited to share a new game that Chicken and Chicken's buddies are in called Squad Busters. You fight monsters. Oh, this looks this looks exhilarating. And Chicken has a big role. That's all that matters. And here is our big ad. Squad up. It's de definitely more exciting than Neva and Deer and Boy. Who are you? Look at your phone. Damn, how much money they got? It's a long ad. We're here to make your life more fun. <laughs> I'm fine. I drink. I drink right out of the carton. Well, I don't think you know the definition of fun. Come on, get off. I am butt naked. Oh, all these so. money was in this ad. Get out of the bed. All right. Tell me about yourself. I, I think I'm an excellent candidate for the job uh, because, uh, uh, because your sword fights on it, but your sword fight. He is a bridge. He's one of the most oh, equitable yeah. people I've ever met. So got Bojack. You got pillaged a few villages. the guy from Ghostbusters 2016. Oh yeah, he was also Which Thor, why, uh, but now nah, he's that guy job. from oh, Ghostbusters 2016. Guys, maybe everything is oh, and that guy from Hangover. Relax your bowels, your mind. You know, I, I like that they just stopped the show for this. I feel like I've been seeing this commercial on YouTube or something. I was like, all right, we got 17 minutes left for the show. They, they're going to bring some heat. This is this is halted it. Pathetic. Imposter. Jinx. 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 No, you jinx. You supposed to be a lumberjack? <laughs> What's this game for? Want to go chop some trees, would you? I'd be delighted. Oh, it's that that game. I think our job here is done. Where are you going? You can't leave. Aye, aye, aye. We I never leave you. Good boy. Here. I came from inside me. All that for for this it doesn't it feels weird. What? All right, please join me in welcoming to the SGF stage Monster Hunter series producer, Mr. Riozo Tujimoto. All right, here we go. Hi, thank you, Jay. I don't know what that garbage was beforehand, but let's get to some let's get to some action now. <coughs> Thank you, Jeff. Hello, everyone. We've prepared a very special trailer today for Summer Game Fest. I want everyone to be on the lookout for a very mysterious large monster near the end of the trailer, as it's an important monster within the game. はい、え、本作ではですね、えっと、没入感とアクション、こちらの融合を目指して開発を進めております。え、モンスターハンターワイルズは2025年にプレイステーション5、Xbox、シリーズ、X、S、そしてPCで同時発売となります。また we're going to be on the PS5, Series X, PC. Now the Switch we're ain't going to be on. We're working 
to deliver a gaming experience that, immer that merges immersion and action. I hope players look forward to playing with their friends across different platforms when the game launches simultaneously in 2025 on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, and PC. はい、え、最後になりますが、え、8月に行われるゲームズコンのオープニングナイトライブ。こちらの方でも新しい映像を持っていきますので、皆さん楽しみにしていただけたらと思っております。え、またですね、え、ゲームズコンではですね、え、初
That looks so good. Full demo that Media will be playing this weekend. So you'll hear much more about that. And that's going to do it for our Summer Game Fest live show. Thanks to Joy for joining us. Thank you, Jeff. I had such an amazing time. Happy Summer Game Fest, everyone. Thanks, Joy. And we have so much more. So stay tuned because Day of the Devs is coming up live right now on the stream featuring an hour of indie game reveals, including the next game from Cappy. And that's followed by Devolver Direct. Now keep checking SummerGameFest.com for other event streams this weekend. And we'll see you again live this August 20th in Germany for Gamescom opening night live. Thanks for watching. Yeah, Phantom Blade Remember, looks Day still great. I want that. <laughs> All right, and that's uh, that's gonna be it for Summer Game Fest. Um, this, for the purpose of time, I will not be able to do Day of the Devs. Uh, last year's show was great, so I'm sure this year's gonna be great as well. I'll have to watch this one uh, on my end, but uh, maybe I can do like a a video just talking about like anything that was shown here. Maybe the, the Devolver one as that time comes. But uh, yeah, that was it for Summer Game Fest. You know what? Honestly. Pretty good show around. It, it was a little slow of parts, I won't lie. But good, good amount of stuff throughout there. So, uh, yeah, that's that's going to be it for me here uh, right now. You know, thanks, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. As always, I'm John GWC. And I'll see you later. Peace.